Well, here we are. This is a new type of build for me, and hopefully I'll be able to document most of it. Um, anything that's new, anything that's already out there, I'm not really going to bother with. So, um, running conduit and pulling wires through conduit and kind of all that basic stuff, I will leave to others. But uh, anything notable or interesting, I will try and document. So. Uh, this is something uh, notable and interesting. Um, this is a new battery cabinet that is uh, designed to hold 16 uh, lithium iron phosphate um, cells. Each cell is 280 amp hours, 3.2 volts. And so this assembled battery uh, will be somewhere around 14 kilowatt hours. Uh, and the reason I chose this enclosure, uh, rather than going and building something on my own is really uh, the cost, the total cost for this enclosure plus all of the other miscellaneous pieces. So that would be the BMS here, the display, all of the hardware, etc. It's all included and it's hard to beat that uh, all in one uh, price. Uh, just sheer cost of buying all those parts individually uh, is quite a bit more expensive than buying this kit. So. That is why I chose to go this route, and I think it will give a better uh, fit and finish. The other benefit is that the uh, BMS, the battery management system for this enclosure, uh, is said to be compatible with the inverter type that I have, so it should eliminate a lot of the, uh, the headaches of trying to make a really non-compatible BMS work with my system, so that's a, a big benefit here. So gonna start to put this together and see how it goes okay so what I've done is installed some uh, one inch deep unistrut on the walls basically that's anchored in up top there there is a cross uh, support in the wall and so that is anchored into there uh, also anchored in down there those are uh, three inch by three eighths inch lag bolts uh, and then I've also added this cross piece here and here, and basically this is going to support the breaker for the battery somewhere in the middle between the inverter and the battery. So this is ready to go. Everything has been tightened into place. That's just a spacer uh, just to kick out the bottom of the battery cabinet, basically keep it so that the battery cabinet isn't kind of tilted with the top out when it's mounted on the wall. And so now it's just a matter of hanging the, the enclosure onto the uh, provided hook and then we'll start to put the batteries in. Alright, so we have the uh, battery enclosure uh, mounted on the wall and I've installed all 16 of the cells and then I've installed the uh, linker bars which basically hold the batteries into the enclosure and now is the time to begin to install the bus bars that basically jumper between each cell all the way through like the stack and then install the BMS so there's a spot uh, down at the bottom here where the BMS kind of slides in and everything gets connected up and away we go. So, uh, so far the assembly of this is really nice. Um, in the videos it shows that this is all being assembled on a bench top. Uh, I found that uh, these cells are quite heavy so in total the cabinet with uh, the 16 cells in it right now is uh, just a little over 200 pounds. And uh, for me to install that on my own was basically not possible. So that's why I chose to put the enclosure on the wall and then start to uh, put the cells in individually. It just makes it more manageable. So yeah, it's, uh, it's coming along. Uh, so yeah, the next step is to start getting the cells jumpered and then get the uh, bottom BMS and everything connected in.
so um, managed to get quite a bit done here. The uh, the enclosure is basically assembled now, apart from the front cover. Um, I've got all of the uh, battery jumpers in place uh, with the sense cables. All of the hardware is being torqued. Um, just a matter of uh, sticking these uh, little thermistors onto the front with some uh, little sticky pads. Um, so yeah, basically I've metered everything out. Everything is uh, you know adding up to the full 56 volts. It's a nominal 48 volt system, but uh, peak charge is about 56. So um, yeah, just a matter now of, uh, like I said, we'll connect up the negative, the sense cables, the positive, display, switch, we should be able to put the cover on and uh, hit the power button. Well, here we are. We've got the battery uh, enclosure assembled. All the cells are connected. Everything's connected inside. I've uh, put the front panel on so it's all screwed into place and uh, should be ready to go as soon as I push this uh, button here in the middle. That's always a, a positive sign when you hit the power button and something works as it's supposed to. Okay, so um, what I've done is using the Bluetooth app on my phone, I've provisioned the uh, BMS to account for the cell size, so 280 amp hour per cell. And I've also set up the communication protocol. Uh, there's a couple different uh, selections in that menu. All I did is I set it to uh, CAN bus and GRWT for GrowWatt. Uh, I've temporarily connected the battery just using um, one of these uh, Anderson power cables and uh, plugged in the CAN bus on the GrowWatt to the CAN bus on the battery and uh, it's working. It's communicating the state of charge which is uh, exactly what you want so that the uh, inverter charger can actually uh, correctly charge the uh, the battery based on its uh, present state. So that was uh, kind of scary how easy that was. Usually it doesn't work out that well for me so I'm waiting for something to, to not work but uh, basically, to clean this up now, this is all temporary. Uh, the Cat5 cable that connects the battery to the inverter is actually going to get uh, get run through the conduit, and it's going to pop up just underneath there, so that'll help protect it, keep it looking nice and tidy. And then, um, hopefully tomorrow, the enclosure for the breaker arrives, and we can get that mounted in there. And then uh, it's just a matter of getting some battery cable and. Uh, going on from there so that's it for now uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon